Welcome back. We're gonna take a look at some more inheritance information today so we can do some cool stuff with Java and how we can explore those concepts. Uh, again, we have that vocab we went over earlier. So we have parent class, child class, and subclass are all just generic terms we used to talk about these ideas. Super parens refers to the parent class constructor. Super dot is how I access methods. Overload, override, nat, override, deal with the idea of methods that we're working with. The final keyword says I can't inherit from it, that's okay. Protect is a special keyword we'll be talking about today. The is and has a relationship, so talk about how we actually relate these objects together. Instance of is a really cool one, we'll be talking about that. Abstract, extends, implants, interface, and this are some of the things we've seen as we go through this. So what do you mean by abstract? So abstract is a special keyword that indicates the date type itself cannot be initialized. So you can't use the new keyword with this class at all or ever. But it is great for the super parens call. So I can access via super, I just can't say equals new that type. And so we'll use our subclass as an abstract class to say, oh, I wanna have this um, structure right here that I can't make copies of it because it's too abstract to actually make a thing. But I can reference it and initialize information so I can have information already pre-filled out, but I can't actually make that object itself. It's great for that design hierarchy where the base method can be implemented for all, all the subtypes at some basic level. Say for example, the required data members that every one of those things have, and the getters and setters already be implemented for that, but we can have that information for right there. I can even include unimplemented methods as well, but if I don't implement them, those subclasses must also be declared as abstract as well because they don't have that information with them, but that's okay. So a parent versus child. So again, remember the parent class has no idea or any even compatibility with any child classes. So parent classes have no relationship with children at all. So this is not something you're normally gonna be seeing and your hopefully your real world interactions with your parents because you want to actually have some relationship between them. The parent class, however, just provides that knowledge based structure we can work with on that. The parent class is also used for polymorphic storage or instantiation. So if I wanna use the idea of making this data structure and hold lots of different subtypes, that's where polymorphic storage is really great for that. I can make an array list or an array or a hash uh, map of that different data types that I'm working with and do all sorts of cool things with that. Downcasting the appropriate child class is the responsibility of the programmer, not the user. Again, when we're writing this code, it's the responsibility of us to actually write this and make it so it's useful for other humans who are using with it. So make sure if you're trying to make something that can you work with a multi-level hierarchical system that you have the correct downcasting on there so you can attach the information to it and work with it appropriately so you don't have to throw um, incompatible type exceptions on that because we want to have good code that works and does great things for us. So that's the idea we have to work with on it. Polymorphic instantiation is when I have a variable of the parent class that's initialized using a subclass's constructor. So if we take a look at the AP Celebrity Lab inside the um, AP Computer Science Lab, we use some differentiation between the different types of celebrity because we have a celebrity base type, which is what the, all the celebrities have, and then I have a, a literature celebrity, I have a cartoon celebrity, I have a Sesame Street celebrity. Whatever thing I'm working with on that, I can have the base type that stores all the things inside it for the array list on there, and I can hold that information with it so I can take anything out of that list and. and take that and put it inside the um, variable that's at that parent class level, but the subtype information will still run it and it'll call the subclass, um, subclass methods because it has the structure to hold it at the rote level, but if any methods inside it, I can cast it down and recall methods for it. So the runtime determines that method execution. So if it is a subclass, but stored in a parent class method, it'll still execute the subclass version of the method that works on that. Of course, as long as I, um, if I have to do a subclass only specific method, I have to downcast that appropriately. But if it's just a parent class method, the subclass methods version is the one that's gonna run on that. So really great, cool stuff for it. Downcasting, I just mentioned a couple times over there, and that's how I can extract a subclass from the parent class type, such as when using a data structure. So I can use the subclass specific methods of that variable in question. And so again, we just use the parens around the um, uh, type, so we can cast that to it, and then assign that into a variable of that type. So we just like we did with when we're uh, casting from a double into an int, or from an int into a double. And so even without downcasting, the variable still is a subclass instance, and before the methods as a subclass, but the subclass specific methods will not be available unless I downcast that on its own. So you can either make a variable the correct type and then cast the original variable into that subclass, or you can simply just wrap the variable inside parens with a cast on the outside of that, and then the dot operator and the method call, and you can have that happen as well. And so it depends on what code style you're working with, what is the best thing for you. If you're starting off with this, I definitely recommend making the variable the correct type and then doing the downcast onto it. But if it's something you're more comfortable with, you can simply just do the casting implicitly and do the call right along with that. So it's just up to you as how you go through it. The instance of keyword is how I can verify the type of a variable. It's great for breaking out of a parent class and a type data structure. Say, for example, using an if else sequence to do from, uh, some things on that. And you can downcast so the specialized methods can be used. I use this all the time when I'm doing some really cool advanced stuff with it. And so I definitely recommend using the instance of. I use it in JUnit testing all the time. 
The protecting keyword is a design thing. It's uh, very key for that. This is thinking of um, inherent specific data and methods. You can hide implementation from a public API, but only be available in your subclass information. Um, methods that are used with a protected keyword can only be called by um, subclasses or things in the exact same package. So especially if you're inheriting across different package types, that can be very useful for you. Um, that's not something we're doing at most um, um, high school or early college level stuff, but you can definitely do some big scale design with that as well. Constructors are prime consideration to use that protected keyword, so you can have specific use of the super package on that, so it's like, oh, I can use that with it. And data that belongs in the typer package only, so if you want to have something that really ought to be private, but you want to be able to eat, um, quick access to it, you can have it be a protected variable instead. And so I still say write the getters and setters, but that is a design choice you can make, so you can have a protected variable and access it that way as well. I like using the app override annotation because it explicitly calls out to myself as a programmer and anyone who looks at my code that I myself know that I'm changing the parent class's method to fit the needs of this subclass. And so I really like using this. I always use it on my two string methods explicitly and the methods that are inheriting from that um, another subclass or inheriting from another parent class. I like to use that so that again I'm calling out that I'm working with that. And so you explicitly call it the developer that you are changing the functionality of the inherited method and it's a good uh, practice to use in the software development plan and better documentation always leads to more stable software. You can do better things with that. I hope this is a good overview of some of the more intermediate concepts of Java inheritance. Take a look at this in other videos and have a great time. Cheers, we'll see you next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye.